The media called President Trump's temporary travel ban a Muslim ban. But according to Pew Research, there are 50 Muslim-majority countries in the world. If this were a Muslim ban, why did President Trump single out only seven countries, which contain just 12% of the world's Muslim population? Why didn't he include the other 43 nations? And why, the left wants to know, didn't he include countries like Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Egypt and Lebanon, countries from which known terrorists, like the 9-11 hijackers, originated? Arguments have been made that no terrorist acts have been committed by people from the seven countries targeted by the President's provisional ban, a question asked by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal. Really? Did they forget that two of the terrorists in the Bataclan theater attack were Iraqi, had fought in Syria, and had entered Europe as refugees? It must have slipped their minds that the machete attacks in Germany in 2016 in which two refugees killed and wounded numerous people were both from Syria. How about Abdul Razik Ali Artin, a 2014 Somali refugee who drove a car into a crowd of fellow students at Ohio State University on November 28, 2016, and then jumped out of his car with a knife, wounding numerous people and killing one. So why did President Trump's temporary ban target these seven countries only? Listen up. The seven countries affected by the ban were first targeted by an anti-terrorism law cited in an executive order signed by former President Barack Obama in 2015. The reason? These seven countries are unable to assist the United States in the vetting process. They are unable to provide background checks, city of origin, birth records, any of the documentation embassy officials require. If you remember, in Syria, the machines, printers, and paperwork used to create passports fell into the hands of known terrorist groups like ISIS. Hello? Like it or not, President Trump's executive order is logical and reasonable. ISIS promised to send jihadists to the West, disguised as refugees, with the hopes of killing their sworn enemies, us. Perhaps we should take them at their word. I, for one, am glad that President Trump kept his campaign promise, exercised his lawful constitutional authority, and is not willing to sacrifice one American life for the sake of popularity with the loony left. Democrats oppose the executive order for one reason and one reason only, because they see more votes for their party and candidate at the ballot box in years to come. Let's just hope their cheap grab for power doesn't cost your daughter son, wife, or husband, their life.